the power of confidence and courage. Where is the place of confidence and courage in living the life that God wants us to live here on earth? It's important for us to understand that confidence is the one of the many uh, secrets of successful people. Show me a successful person. Show me a, a man or a woman that is triumphing in any areas of their life. I will show you a man or a woman that is confident in God and confident in their own ability. Can I hear amen? In Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse 35, God told us this clearly. It's in your Bible, and I want you to understand that. It says, do not throw away your confidence because your confidence has, will greatly be rewarded. That's God speaking to us. Don't push aside confidence. In another word, cultivate confidence. In whatever you do in life, inject confidence in your life. And it's, God says, I will reward that confidence. This is one of the secrets that of great achievers, those who achieve things, those who aspire in this world, those who move in the space where we envy and we want to be like them, one of their secrets is confidence. Lack of confidence is automatically accepting defeat in our lives. This is why Paul says we must, we must not carry, I mean, cast away our confidence. Now, many of us talk about great charisma in leaders. You see some leaders that have this great charisma, their walk and their gesture, you can see their charisma. You say they are charismatic. Now, I've come to say the charisma of these people has its roots in their confidence. Confident to be able to apply and carry themselves in a way that projects um, uh, boldness in them and assurance that they can achieve whatever they want to do. This is very, very important for us to know. Whatever we do, we are encouraged to possess unshaken confidence if we are going to achieve our purpose, our vision, our dreams. Confidence must be there. This is why a person with confidence, without confidence, has lost the battle. Now, listen to me. Why does the devil attack our confidence? Because he knows that if you have confidence, you have this unshaking grace in you to be able to know that the ability that God has put in you um, will help you to achieve whatever you need to achieve. Look at people around you without confidence. Look at their, you will see from their sitting, you will see from their talking, you will see from their posture, you will see from their dominion, their looks. It's so important for us to understand that confidence is very, very vital. The devil fills our mind with unworthiness because we lack confidence. The devil fills our mind with worry and fear of what of if it doesn't happen because we lack confidence. When a man lacks confidence, the devil will fill their thoughts with a lot of inability. You are not worthy. You can't make it. Why are you wasting your time? Are you the only one? Can't you see other people like you? The devil will make our mind to wander to the class of people who are lacking in confidence. And we'll be able to see them. Have you not seen people who are comparing other people with themselves? They could not see that they can achieve more than those people are achieving. It's because they lack confidence. He attacks people's confidence in God and gives them ability to be able to rely on themselves or rely on the circumstances, and circumstances change. Too many people are living, uh, too many people today are not living their dreams. 
they are not living the fulfillment, fulfillment of their destiny because they lack confidence. I want you to listen to this. A person may lose his weapon in battle. But if he loses his confidence, he's dead already. If he loses his weapon in battle, but his confidence is intact, he can still win that battle. This is why our confidence, very, very important, is going to help us to stand and to win every battle of life. What is confidence? Confidence is the quality or or state of being certain. Confidence is this quality or state of being certain. You certain, you sure of what you are doing. And this is the quality that God wants us to have. We can say confident is taking the position that intimidates the opposition. Confidence is a position that intimidates our opposition. The opposition may be the circumstances. The opposition may be human being. The opposition may be anything. Where there is confidence, where there is confidence, where there is confidence, we intimidate our opposition. Our confidence is a proof that we are confident in God's ability in our lives. Our confidence is a proof that we are confident in God's ability. Whatever God has placed in our heart, in our life, our confidence is a proof of that. Our confidence will propel us to the next levels in life. Look at the people from any endeavor of life. Look at the people in sport. I listen to coaches. You know, because I'm a pastor and by God's grace, because I'm also a coach, I believe I I help people to develop in life. So I listen to these people. uh, As I was sharing with my brother earlier on, I like to just read about their stuff, how they make it, how they do things. And some of these people, some of these coaches, sport coaches, you know, when they have won many championships, and you find them saying something. I need to inject confidence in my players because when they are confident, then they can beat anybody any day. And you find that phrase in every winning team. Every every losing team, you don't find that phrase. The Bible says, don't throw away your confidence because that confidence will bring reward in your life. And we must understand this, that it's not just in the world. Now, let, let's, let me show you a person of confidence in the Bible. We know the story of David, David that killed Goliath. David was a man of absolute and unquestionable, unquestionable confidence. We know that from all his stories and all the things that we read in the Bible, he was the least of his father's house. He was not recognized. He doesn't have any formal training in the military. All he knows is to take care of those few sheep that his father has committed into his hand and to go into the back of the bush and to feed them. That's all David knows. Confidence took him to face to face with Goliath. And when he got there, the Bible, the Bible says his father told him to go and give his brothers food. And when he got there, he had the blah, blah, blah of the Goliath. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? For Samuel chapter 17. And everybody was telling him, shh, 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 quiet, quiet, don't let him hear you. The Bible says he raised his voice again. He was about seven, between 17 and 20 years old. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is speaking nonsense about our God? The king took him in and said, listen, he said, I'm going to fight this guy because it's not me. He said, I have confidence in God. And God says, anyone that has confidence in him, he will reward him with victory. We know the rest of the story. They told him, put on the armor, put on sword. He said, I am not trained to be this. He said, I have a name. His name is Jehovah. I know the ability. He shared his testimony. He said, when a sheep comes, I run after that. I mean, when a a lion comes after the sheep, I run after that lion. I grab him by the throat. 
and I deal with the lion. When a bear comes, I run after the bear. He said, I would do this uncircumcised Philistine the same way. We all know the story in the Bible. Confidence. Confidence. Everybody say confident. His confidence gave him the victory needed to defeat Goliath and look at all his life, all the battles that he won. It's his confidence in the ability of God in him. And that's why I believe that God wants me to remind us to build our confidence. If your confidence is somewhere there, jack it up. Your vision cannot die. Your dream cannot die. Your purpose cannot die unless your confidence dies. How many of you have bought something from a salesman before? Anybody? Somebody comes, either knock on your door, telephone or somewhere, and you bought that product because of the person that came to sell it to you. Does it happen to anybody before? They are confident in presenting their products. Amen? They are confident. No, if you buy this, that is this. That, and they talk. And the way they present it. And the way they project it. And the way they, they place it on your heart. You have no choice but to put your hands in the pocket to pay them for the product. Confidence. John Maxwell said... Um, Every salesman is a man that goes to help companies to grow, to develop. He said every salesman, their secret, one of the things they teach them before they start selling is how to put their con project their confidence. How to project their confidence. This is why I started by telling us that confidence is quality of being certain. I know if I go... And I have, with, with this confidence, I know I'm going to sell my product. A confident person does not see failure. A, comp a confident do person does not see obstacle. A confident person sees obstacle as opportunity. Okay, there's an obstacle there. Is confident taking me to the place where he will take that us obstacle as opportunity to achieve his purpose. A com a somebody who is not confident will say, ah, it's raining outside there, I cannot go to the farm. The one who is confident will say, no, that rain is good. I will beat the rain to go to the farm so that I can achieve my purpose. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? In Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Second Cor Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, now thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who was the word after who? Always. Aproskedia de Zula Prakotidia. God always causes me to what? Triumph. That's confident. That's the confidence a believer must have. Christ in me, the hope of glory. And he always, always, not sometimes. Not maybe mush for see kela manash. Not it he always causes me to triumph. The latter passes in every place. In every place. The Bible says, wherever the sole of your feet shall step, I will give it unto you. In every place. That's the confidence a believer must have. In his God and in the ability that God has placed in you. God has placed the ability in us to achieve whatever we want to achieve. But he's telling us in order to achieve that, we must not allow our confidence to leave us. In the midst of every challenge, there must be a way out. Those, that's the language of a confident person. No, this is, a, but there must be a way out. There must be a solution. I must do this thing because I know they never see themselves disadvantaged. That's why sometimes you hear me say it all the time. I'm not at disadvantage of anything. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I said it many times. 
They don't see themselves as disadvantaged. Their color is not disadvantaged. Their race is not disadvantaged. Either they are male or female, their sex is not disadvantaged. And we must understand that a confident person, listen, they don't say because I'm not Maltese. You, you hear people that say, hey, it doesn't happen because I, if I'm Maltese, it will happen to me. No. No. A confident person projects themselves and that confidence pushes them ahead. That confidence carries them to achieve their goal, to achieve their purpose, to achieve their dream and their destiny that God has placed in their life. That's why the Bible says again in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, uh, 35, don't throw away your confidence. There is nothing extraordinary about people we call extraordinary people. What is extraordinary about them is their confidence. Amen? That is what is extraordinary in them. Let's look at some confident killers. There are some confident killers we must avoid. Number one, if you want to achieve your purpose, the first confident killer that the Lord revealed to me is low self-esteem. Low self-image. Listen, it will kill every fiber of confidence that is in us. And we must avoid it. You hear people say stuff like, I don't, I don't think I can. Anybody have heard somebody say that? I, I don't think I can. That is coming from the root expression. They are basically saying to you, I don't think I'm worth it. I don't think I'm worth it. And that is exactly what the devil puts in the mind of people without confidence. You are not worth it. Don't pursue it. It's not for you. Low self-image. It's a killer and it will kill and it has killed dreams. It has killed vision. It has killed ambition. I used to suffer self, low self-esteem. It doesn't look like that today. But a few years back, I used to suffer low self-esteem. To the extent that, you know, because I wear big size of shoe, you're watching that, you don't see that. I wear size 52. It's, a, it's, it's quite big. It's, it's, a, it's difficult to find. If people make a comment about my feet, I might not go out tomorrow. That, that's how it used to be for me. I used to suffer low self-esteem. As soon as I hear that, the devil will whisper something into my ears. You see? You see? And all kind of things will begin to cloud my mind. Until God showed me in Psalm 139, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Ole kosudia rabaskondiria. From that day forever. I realized that this is how God created me. Moses was a man that lacked confidence. Read about him. God said to him, Moses, I want to send you some. Ah, no, 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 no. I, I am a stammerer. I, I can't do that. We read that in Exodus chapter 4, from verse 10 to 12. Jeremiah was another man. No, I can't do that. But you cannot talk about the exodus of the children of Israel into the promised land without talking about Moses. Does that make sense to us? You cannot talk about the deliverance of the children of Israel from Babylon without talking about Jeremiah. And yet, these two people, they carry their low self-esteem for so long until God encouraged them. Listen to me if you are watching online. God is encouraging you today. And if you are sitting down here, God is encouraging you today. Get rid of low self-esteem. Low self-esteem will make you run you crazy. Anxiety comes through that. Depression comes through that. It will affect the way you see yourself and not the way God sees you. Your life and your future, it will result in self-hatred. Have you not heard many Christians, I don't like myself? Anybody have heard that? I don't like myself. I don't like the way I look. Low self-esteem. 
you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It doesn't matter. I don't know who said it. It's a quotation that says, beauty is in the eyes of the people that, that behold it. Some things you say is beautiful. Another person says it's not beautiful. Something you say is not beautiful. Another thing, person says it's beautiful. Don't allow people's comments to affect your confidence. Amen? Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Low self-esteem is what creates all this nonsense. It off the feeling of anger and frustration. Low self-esteem will create, you want to be perfect. Have you not seen people, they call them perfectionists. Whatever they do, if they place this here, they are constantly with the sense of not good enough. I should do it like this. I should do it like this. They have this negative body image. Even when they sit down, the way they sit down, they crouch. You will know. You study psychology like I do. You will know somebody when you walk into a room. You will know confident people. They are oversensitive. They can easily quit at the smallest challenge. There is no way that God told you you will not be challenged. You shall go through many waters. But he said you will go through it. And, I, and I've done this with my family, my children many times. And I share that on Sunday with us as well. A little bit of challenge, I take it on. I take it on. I do that to teach them lesson of life, but I also do that to make my faith, to say, okay, listen, I'm going to, for example, you, you're trying to park a car, and then you, somebody's honking behind you. Has it happened to you? You're trying to park, and people are honking, bing, bing, bing. They, are, they are trying to frustrate you. You just decide to go. No, you wait. I found a place, I use that simple exercise to build my confidence. Are, are you following me? I said, are you listening to me? This is something we must understand. Don't throw, don't, don't quit at the smallest challenge. You're building your confidence. You're building it. Number two, what is a killer of confidence is fear. Fear of what of if it doesn't happen. I've said it many times. What of if it happens? What if I engage or embark in this thing? What of if it doesn't happen? We must understand that confidence comes from not always being right. Let me repeat that. Confidence comes from not always being right. I'm confident doesn't mean that I'm not going to be wrong. Are you with me? It doesn't mean you are not going to be wrong. Confidence comes from not always being right, but not fearing that you can be wrong. You're just confident, and you just move ahead to do whatever you want to do. I've learned this about confidence, and that it is necessary, even though you may not be right. One of the scriptures that have helped me a lot is Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3. In Psalm 46, verses 1, God is our refuge and our strength. And then it says, can we read after strength, one to go? A very present help in, in challenge, in trouble, in difficulties, in opposition. When I'm struggling, I have my helper. When I have my challenge, I have my helper. When I have this difficult, I have my helper. When I can't think properly, I have my helper. He is the very present help. That has helped me a lot. So confidence comes from not always being right, but not fearing to be wrong. Because I have God, even if I'm wrong, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. That's the confidence. That's the confidence. Confident people don't go about their life and their business thinking, what of if I fail? They go about their life and business, I will make it. If they fail, they don't consider it as failure. They consider it as a learning curve. 
they fail. Their failure is a learning curve. It's not failure. I've learned, like that man said, I've learned 999 times not to make electricity. Is it Thomas? Yes. Number three, opinion of other people of you. It will drain the last stroke of confidence you have. If you're going around people and asking them, what do you think of me? <laughs> have you not heard? How many of you have had people there? They just come to you, what do you think about this? When God gave you that vision, did he give it to them? I said, did he give it to them? So why are you asking their opinion? Why can't you go back to him and ask his opinion? Opinion of other people. And you are watching from home, and you have allowed the opinion of people to finish you. You are who you are today because of opinion of people. I pray God will deliver us all. The reason, this is the reason many people have failed and many people have faltered and many people are by the wayside of life. The opinion of people have drained the last bit of confidence that they ever have. You will never rise to the top where God wants you to be if all you are listening to is the opinion of people about you. Remember what I said, confidence doesn't mean you are always right. But it means you are not afraid to fail. People don't have God. They, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. There is nobody that has the God-given right to allow you to follow their opinion. Nobody. Not your parents. Not your, nobody has the God-given right to make you follow their opinion. They can share their opinion but they don't make you by force to follow their opinion. This is very crucial if we are going to achieve what God wants us to achieve. Your life decision must be based on your own values. The problem is how many people have or know their own values? Your life decisions must be based on your own values. Not on other people's opinion. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Paul put it this way. I am now, am I now trying to win the approval of people? Or the approval of God? Now the underline, let's read it together after two, one, two. Or am I trying to please people? Is that what we are trying to do? I don't do that thing that God told me to do because I'm trying to please people. I'm trying, I don't want people to say, you hear me, but if I do, what will people say? What will people say? Listen, people will always say. If you do it, they will say. If you don't do it, they will say. Confident people do not rely on people's opinion of them, but they rely on God's opinion on them. Lastly, confident killer, the association we keep. Been talking about this for a while. And I believe this, this is the message that God wants me to pass on to us so that it can resonate. The association we keep, if it's wrong association, it will, it will zap every confidence we have in God and every confidence we have in ourselves. I've said this many times. You will never rise above the group of people you mix with. Birds of the same feather does what? Flock together. You will never rise above the group you mix with. In every group, in every bird, in every, there is also always a leader. Usually the leader is the one that has more brain. If you are in a group, wrong group, where their brain is wrong, you will be as wrong as them. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13. Do not be deceived. 
if you mix with bad company, your character will be corrupt. You don't have to be friends of everybody. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's good to have, to have one or two friends, but be careful who you associate with. Get rid of those who are constantly criticizing you. You are mixed with people. All they can talk about you is what you have not done well. It will zap your confidence. You've not done it well. They are not telling you, come on. Even, so what if you have not done it well? Are you the only one that has not done anything well? Try it again tomorrow. No, eh, don't do it again eh, because you remember, you remember 2013 when you did it. They will remind you. People will remind you of your failure of five years ago. Failure of ten years ago. They are not telling you in five years where you can be. They are telling you in five years where you are. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Jesus said, your sin I remember no more. Why should they be reminding you of your failures? Rather than reminding you of the pro promises and project you to see where you can be. I said it all the time. You can never rise above the association we keep. Check the friends, the association, the, your lovers, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Check them. If you are married, um, all the best. <laughs> but if you are not married, if they are not good, push them aside. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Anyone that walk with the wise will be wise. Anyone that sits among the fool will suffer harm. God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you are, your company are foolish people, when destruction comes, you will be destroyed with them. Confidence is what commits God to our course in life. But if you don't sever from bad and wrong association, you push God aside. Confidence is the cornerstone of every achiever in life, as I've said earlier on. And I want to finish with this. If we hang around people with low self-esteem, if we hang around people with, that are always talking about fear, Something will happen. Something will happen. Something will happen. If we hang around people that are full of their own opinion, if we hang around them, you are not going to achieve. You will always be a follower. You will always be dragging. You will always be side. You will not be ahead. Oprah Winfrey said, Confidence is what makes her continue to look for new adventure in life. Multi-billionaire. She still, look at every successful person. Their confidence makes them to look at what else can I achieve? What else can I achieve? The question I want to ask you as I close, what do you want to achieve in 2021? Don't make sure you don't allow those four confident killers to locate you. You're watching this. You are not born again. That is where you need to start from. Unless a man is born again, Jesus said he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And if you want to know more about being born again, you can reach us on any of those numbers on the screen. We would like to meet you. We would like to help you to know more about Jesus, the Bible, and how you can live a victorious life. Until next time, may the Lord bless you.